This program is made possible by the partners and friends of Bob Yandian Ministries. Coming up on this episode of Student of the Word. There's only two times that problems can erupt in your life, when you're in God's will or when you're out of God's will. You say, well, that's not very encouraging. Yes, it is, because you're gonna face problems all the time. But if you're in God's will, you have an answer. If you're out of God's will, you're gonna stick with it. You're gonna be in that problem for a long, long time, because God can't help you if you're out of his will and won't trust in him. But if you trust in him, you're in the middle of God's will, right where you're supposed to be. You can laugh at problems. For more than 40 years, Bob Yandian has been an expositor of the Bible, making seemingly complicated doctrine easy to understand. Grab your Bible and something to take notes with and study the Word of God with Pastor Bob Yandian. Hello and welcome back again to Student of the Word. This is Pastor Bob Yandian. So glad to have you here today. And I just want you to know, no matter what trouble you're going through, no trial you're coming through, the good news is, Jesus said in this world, you'll have troubles and trials, but be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. Instead of looking at the problem, look at the fact you're coming out of it. Instead of looking at where you are right now, look at where you're going. I remember growing up, my sister and I sat in the back seat of the car and man, you know, there was no, there was no TV screens in the car and we couldn't watch videos. And you know, we didn't even have Walkman back then. So we couldn't even listen to cassette tapes. It was before that time, we were very, very young. And we sat in the back seat and we used to dread those trips to go see my grandmother because it was about a 10 hour drive. And the moment we drove out of the driveway, halfway down the street, my sister and I both started into it. When are we gonna be there? You know, you know, how long will it take? And uh, why aren't we there yet? And all the different things. And again, it came back to it, we dreaded the trip. And my mother would always turn around and say, oh, come on, you know, and she'd tell us things to do. Count cows, or, or if you see cars coming and it's, and it's dark, count how many cars just have one headlight. I mean, all these different games we would play. And again, our whole thing was, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? And of course, eventually we would get there. But the point of it is, is that's what we do with God. We start down this thing called you know, life and all of a sudden a trouble comes along. We start yelling out, are we there yet? Are we there yet? You know, and God is more interested in the trip than he is the destination. What we're teaching on, I'm calling this perfected under pressure, is the fact that we can be perfected on the trip. The purpose of the trip is so we will get there in better shape than when we left. When we get there, we'll be more mature than when we left. And so God is interested in the trip, not just the destination. All we're interested in is the destination. When we're sick, all we can think about is, I want this sickness gone, I want this sickness gone. And God is simply saying something here. It will come, and that's going to be the answer to this. this listen, this sickness came from Satan, this problem came from the world system. It might have come from your own flesh, but here's the point. You're gonna come through this thing, and you're gonna come out on the other side. But the point of it is, God wants character developed, and you can't develop character outside of pressure. Okay, you can't just sit here and develop character. You can study the word of God, that helps with your character, but the actual perfecting of your character, the actual production where your character is developed comes from the fact that you come through trials, troubles, and temptations. And so many of you watching this program might know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, some of you watching this program might have no idea what I'm talking about because maybe you've only been born again for a while or you've been taught that the Christian life never faces any problems. Once you're born again, you'll have no more problems. I'm here to tell you, you probably have more problems as a Christian than you ever did as a sinner, but as a sinner, you had no escape, no way out of it, no problem solving in your life except for what you could think of and strings you could pull. But now that you're born again, even if you have more trials and troubles, troubles in life, you have an answer. And that answer is, I'll be with you always. I'll bring you through. Put your trust in me. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. Paul said, in this lifetime, you'll have troubles and trials, but again, be of good cheer. I've over Jesus Christ has overcome the world. And he even told us those who live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. But the point of it is, if you'll come through persecution, hang on the word of God, keeping your faith in him, keeping your joy in life, count it all joy when you fall into different types of temptations, James tells us, simply comes back to this. What is your focus on during this time? Instead of griping that you're not there, yet, why not get up each day saying, you know what, if it doesn't happen today, if I don't come through today, I'm still going to rejoice. This is what God wants. This is the purpose 
of why we as Christians are left here is to come through trials, troubles, and show the world not only that we are born again, but how the new birth works in us in the face of all the troubles we have. Because the word of God simply tells us the new birth is not just spiritual to take us to heaven. It's also practical to where it takes us through our walk here in life and causes us to come out successful on the other side. And so this is what I'm talking about here today. And in fact, if you'd like to join me in this ministry, if you believe in this ministry so much, go to my website at bobyandian.com, you'll find a place on there where you can click on it or touch on it and you can become a partner with me in this ministry. And I so appreciate it because I'm here to tell you, it's gonna be a while before Jesus comes back. I don't know how long, but in the meantime, we're gonna keep on living successfully and bring as many people with us into the kingdom of God or producing Jesus Christ in them for the world to see it. This is what we're talking about, perfected under pressure in this particular teaching. Romans chapter eight tells us, beginning in verse 22, that in this world, we are in league with nature itself. There's trials and troubles in our life. Uh, the world is under a curse. This curse occurred when Adam turned basically this world system over to Satan. We're told in 1 John 5, 19, the whole world lies in wickedness. So wickedness is the background of this world system and it's gonna keep on getting worse until Jesus comes and finally takes care of it. 1 John 2, 16, for all that is in the world is not of the Father. The world system is not of the Father, it's of the world's Father, which is the devil himself. In fact, Jesus said, of religion, you are of your Father, the devil. So the world is wrapped up in all this evil we see around us, and this evil is gonna keep getting worse and worse. Let me qualify something here. A lot of Christians keep saying, we're gonna change the world, we're gonna change the world. You're not gonna change the world, okay? The world's gonna keep on getting worse. Well, we're gonna stop the world. No, God hasn't sent you here into this earth to change the world or stop the world, that's his responsibility. He sent you in this world to get people saved and to disciple people in this earth. We can affect the earth. God has sent us here to block the world, not to stop it, not to change it, but to block it, to slow it down. In essence, we are the mud the world has to swim through to get anything done. We slow them down at everything and they hate us for it. And so what this is saying is simply this. We are in the world right now. The world is under a curse, but even the world knows it's gonna be delivered. There is, a, there is a redemption. The world knows their day is coming. They don't know when it's going to be, but the earth will be set free from the trouble and trials that was a set upon it by Adam. And when Adam sinned, all of a sudden, this perfect nature around us began to have problems and animals turned on each other and some began to eat the other. They began to attack each other. Uh, snakes became poisonous, many of them. And thorns and thistles and weeds begin to grow up everywhere and the world became entrapped by this curse. And this curse has gone into the dust of the ground and everything made of dust is affected by the curse. That means we also, we are in league with nature for one reason, because we still have a physical body that's made out of the dust of the ground and we are in league with nature. So as nature suffers, we suffer, suffer also. Listen to Romans chapter eight, verse 22 and verse 23. For we know the whole creation groans and travails in pain together until now. And not only them, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit. He's speaking about Christians. The first fruits of the Spirit is the new birth. Not only they, that is nature, but ourselves also, we who have the first fruits of the Spirit, the new birth, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption, that is the redemption of our body. We are groaning, waiting for our body to be redeemed. The world is groaning under the troubles of tornadoes and hurricanes and earthquakes and volcanoes and all the things we see happening around the world and all the storms that seem to get worse and worse. The world is gonna get worse and worse and worse and it's gonna take Jesus Christ at the end. The world system cannot be changed. The world system cannot be stopped. The world system can only be destroyed. And that's what Jesus is gonna come back one day and do, destroy the world system and completely renovate it and basically start over again with the millennial reign of Jesus Christ. And at that time, nature will, will be completely loosed from the bondage of corruption that's in right now. We're told in the word of God, the trees will clap their hands, the oceans will rejoice and clap their hands. All of nature will break forth. The, an the animals will no longer have a curse. The lion 
lamb will lay down with the lamb and they won't eat the lamb and the poisonous snakes won't bite children anymore and kill them or bite anybody. And even says a child will die at 100. That means they'll go from puberty into full adulthood. That passing on of childhood won't happen until they're 100 years old. Because why? Longevity will be restored. Even death will be removed because physical death came as a result of Adam's fall. It's part of the curse that's in this earth. And so again, we have it here. But we groan because we are left with adversity and trials. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 2 says, In this body we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon which our house, which is our house, which is from heaven. Our new house is a resurrection body. We, the, I'm at home right now in this body, but it's only a temporary body. It's a body that's decaying. It's a body that's falling apart. It's a body that through the years is beginning to sag and bag. You know, they say the sands of time flow downward. Well, that's exactly what's happening in my body and happens in people that get old. And so again, but we're looking forward to the time when this body's gonna be gone and we will have a resurrection body that will never wear out, never be under a curse. And that resurrection body will be just like the one Jesus Christ has himself that he received at resurrection. So in this body, we groan, 2 Corinthians 5, to earnestly desiring to be clothed upon which uh, with our house, which is from heaven. So we'll have a resurrection body one day. We will have a new body and the earth will be redeemed from its curse. We will no longer have a curse. The earth will no longer have a curse. And we will be back just like it was in the Garden of Eden and uh, where there was total freedom from a curse. And so that is a day yet to come for us. We look forward to it. But in the meantime, what do we do? We rejoice. We know that day's coming. Because nature rejoices. You don't see cows out there throwing in the towel going, you know what, man, I'm just giving up. I'm tired of this curse in this earth. No, they know a day is coming and they patiently wait for it. What should we be doing? At least take something from that because those cows aren't born again. But they, there's an inward knowing in them that all the stuff they're going through will one day be gone. And all the earthquakes and all the tornadoes and all the hurricanes and all the things we see around us that happens all the time, are really going to come to an end one day. All these things are getting closer and closer and closer together because the day of the tribulation is coming, but also it's not even the tribulation. It's at the end of the tribulation, Jesus Christ is going to come back and remedy the earth of the curse and remove that curse. Again, he's going to destroy the world system and start all over again. So again, our treasure that we have right now inside of us, this new birth. Let's take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 9. We have this treasure in earthen vessels, that the excellence of the power might be of God and not of us. I want to stop right there and I want you to notice something. This treasure is in an earthen vessel. The treasure is the new birth. The treasure is Jesus Christ in me, the hope of glory. The treasure I have inside is the Holy Spirit lives in me and my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. But we have this treasure in an earthen vessel. In other words, this on the outside is decaying day by day. Though the outward man perish, the inward man, the treasure is renewed day by day and gets better and better. So God knew what he was doing. He took this absolute treasure of eternal life and put it inside of us and it's inside my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit, but the body is decaying decaying and it's called an earthen vessel, which shows it's still under the curse because it's made out of earth. And one day, this natural body will become a spiritual body. And we're told that in 1 Corinthians 15. The natural body comes from the word nature. My body is still made out of nature, but one day it will no longer be made out of nature. It's gonna be made out of spirit, become tangible. The natural body will become a spiritual body. And since the spirit is eternal, my resurrection body will be eternal. It will never wear out and it has all these wonderful blessings that come from God. We're gonna to go to a break right now. And it's all comes, what I'm teaching is coming from this particular series called So Great Salvation. You'll be blessed by it. We'll see you right after the break. The salvation Jesus bought for us with his sacrifice is far more than what most believers ever understand. Our salvation is complete in every aspect. Nothing has been left out. We are new creatures, free from sin's power, accepted into heaven. Our minds are renewed, our way is prosperous, and our bodies are healed. It truly is so great a salvation. This four message series by Pastor Bob Yandian will give you a greater understanding of the benefits of all three aspects of your salvation in the new covenant. Salvation of your spirit, your soul, and your body. Messages include free from sin, saved from sin's power, perfect under pressure, and saved by hope. To order So Great Salvation, 
Go to bobyandian.com or call 918-250-2207. Bob Yandian Ministries is training up a new generation in the Word of God. Because of your generosity and faithfulness, this teaching ministry is able to change countless lives. You will never know until you get to heaven how many people received Jesus, were filled with the Holy Spirit, healed, or found God's will for their life through your support and prayers. If you would like to schedule Bob Yandian to speak at your church, event, or conference, go to bobyandian.com forward slash invite or call 918-250-2207. Well, welcome back. I really trust that you'll get yourself a copy of the CD. This series is great. And so much about salvation is taught that not just the fact we're born again, but how growing in the Lord every day is part of that salvation. You'll be blessed by it. I wanna say this again, I've said it before, but I wanna reiterate it again. What you put into spiritual things can be passed on from generation to generation. You know, my, my mom and dad gave us a set of encyclopedias. My mom and dad and, and Loretta's mom and dad gave us a set of encyclopedias. And those things were useless after a few years. So much of man's knowledge changed and they were useless. And, and my mom and dad spent a lot of money on those on those encyclopedias. But the point of it is you can buy books for $10, $15 spiritual books, and they'll still be great a, a hundred years from now. Your grandchildren, your grandchildren's grandchildren can be studying still. And the point of it is because the word of God lives and abides forever. And the word never changes. Man's natural knowledge changes all the time. And God's spiritual uh, understanding never changes. So again, that's the important of buying this. And whatever you put into natural books and magazines, you should put three or four times more into spiritual things that can be handed on from generation to generation. The things you underline, the yellow arts you put in those books are something can be handed on. Your children can even look at and be blessed by it in the years to come. Let's go back to the passage we were discussing. 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 and through 9 says this, we have this treasure, the new birth, in earthen vessels, that's our physical body, under the curse. Our body's still under the curse, but we can walk free from it. We can control that because greater is he that's in us, the new birth, than he that's in the world or even in our natural flesh that we have around us. It goes on to say that the excellency of the power might be of God and not of us. We have nothing we can offer from our natural self, only comes from God. But verse 8 goes on to say, we are troubled on every side. Here I am in this world. I've got Jesus Christ in me, the Holy Spirit in me. I'm still living in a tangible body that will be gone one day, but I'm in the world's system. I'm not in heaven yet, but I'm a piece of heaven in this earth. I'm in the world, but not of the world. It goes on to say in that verse, we are troubled on every side, but not distressed. We are perplexed, but never in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Look at all these things. There's an answer for everything. And you know what that answer is? Your attitude. What should be your attitude when trouble comes along? Don't be distressed. Don't be in despair. Don't be forsaken. Don't be destroyed. In every single case, we can have our attitude right. And Jesus said that, be of good cheer, I've overcome the world. So yes, we'll have troubles and trials in life, but you know what? Count it all joy. As you do that, you begin to understand something. Why do I rejoice? I don't just put a grin on my face to have a grin on my face. It's not just a thing, well, laugh, don't even though you don't try, just at least laugh. No, there's an attitude behind it. I laugh because I know something. I know whatever Satan destroys to destroy me comes at me, it's just temporary. And his temporary problem, I have an eternal solution on the other side. Satan, God was here before you, God will be here after you. You are here for a while, but you'll be cast in the lake of fire forever. Here's the good news. God was here before my problem came along and God will be here after my problem is gone. The good news is my problem is temporary, but the God of eternity is eternal and that's what lives inside of me. So I am stronger than my problems. I can outlast my problems. This last thing says I'm cast down, but not destroyed. It means I might be knocked down at times, but you know what? I get up every single time. I'm better than Rocky. I'll get up every single time knowing that I can stand back up because the one I'm fighting will eventually be down on the mat. I'll use the word of God, I'll use the power of the Holy Spirit and I will walk in holiness no matter what Satan does and no matter what he throws my way. And one time he's gonna have to give up. He's gonna have to stop it sometime. He'll reform, he'll come back again at some other time because even when he came against Jesus and Jesus came at him three times with the word and said, it is written, it is written, it is written. Satan departed for a season. He has to, to go lick his 
his wounds and then gain some strength and come back. He came back after a while. He departed for a season. But you know what? I don't last for a season. I last forever and I'll outlast him. I'm not in this to fight 15 rounds. If it takes 20 or 30 rounds, you know what? I'm still gonna be standing when it's all over and Satan will be on the mat. That's the problems of life as far as I'm concerned. The world throws them at me, Satan throws them at me. My own flesh throws problems in my way. But you know what? The greater one lives inside of me and I will come out successful on the other side. And when I do come out successful, I'll be better off because the purpose of me going through problems is maturity. You know, the thing about our, uh, what the word of God also tells us is this, is that there's no trial can come against us that God hasn't already planned and knows it was coming. He didn't make, he didn't cause it to come. He has a plan for me in the midst of it. And that is, as I come through it, he has a plan for me that I'm gonna come through successful on the other side. He will, with the temptation, make a way of escape. God, I can walk into a problem knowing the way of escape is already there because God knew the problem was coming and made the way of escape before the problem came. God didn't make the problem. He makes the solution. And Satan is the author again of our problems. You know, back in the Old Testament, when they went through the, the time of being in the wilderness, it said they came to a time to a place called Meribah, Meribah and there was no water. But you know what the problem, what it said before the problem was there? They walked in the plan of God. They were walking in the way of God. So you can be in the midst of God's will and problems come along. It's just part of the Christian life. But when you're in the midst of God's will and coming into a problem, you guaranteed God will bring you out on the other side. There's only two times that problems can erupt in your life, when you're in God's will or when you're out of God's will. You say, well, that's not very encouraging. Yes, it is, because you're gonna face problems all the time. But if you're in God's will, you have an answer. If you're out of God's will, you're gonna stick with it. You're gonna be in that problem for a long, long time because God can't help you if you're out of his will and won't trust in him. But if you trust in him, you're in the middle of God's will, right where you're supposed to be. You can laugh at problems. You can laugh at the things that Satan brings by, brings your way and realize this, I'm gonna outlast it. I'm gonna be here when this problem is gone. And sure enough, in the 40 years of temptations in the wilderness, God brought them through every single problem, but the sad thing was they didn't remember it. They came back and griped every single time. And finally, that generation had to die off and their sons and daughters went into the promised land. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter four, we're there. Jump down with me to verse 16. We're gonna read verse 16 through 18. For which cause, this is the glory of God being manifested in our problems, it says, we faint not, but though our outward man perish, this is getting older, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us. This is Romans 8, 28. God will cause all things to work together for your good. Our light affliction, which is but for a moment, works for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Here's the good news. This verse is saying you're gonna face problems all the time, but your light affliction, which is just for a moment, ha, huh? you're probably thinking light affliction? The doctor has diagnosed me with cancer and says I could die. And you call that a light affliction? Yes, the Bible does, which is but for a moment. I've been in the midst of this problem, Pastor Bob, for five years. It's still not over. And you're telling me it's just for a moment? Yes, in the light of eternity, when you are in heaven, you're gonna look back on that and say, you know what? I thought that was so terrible at the time, but you know what? It was nothing. It's a lightweight. And on top of that, I thought five years was forever on that planet of earth. But you know what? Looking back on it, it was just for a moment. Compared to eternity, everything's but for a moment. Your light affliction, which is but for a moment, during the time it's there, can work for you. And not only does it work for you and create your character, but also works for you a far more greater thing, eternal weight of glory. When you get to heaven, you're gonna be rewarded for how you came through trials and troubles. There's rewards for that in heaven. So it can work for you and bring you temporary relief down here. That is, oh, the trial's over. Oh, praise God, it's over. I'm glad my finances are back in shape. I'm glad that lawsuit is over. I'm glad all these things, we can rejoice in that. I'm glad I got a doctor's report, but all that is just temporary. But how you came through it, standing on the word of God, brings an eternal weight of glory. I'm gonna be in heaven one day, and God's gonna be handing out rewards at the judgment seat of Christ, and I'm going to receive those things. And it says, the things which are seen are temporary, but the things which are not seen, the promises 
promises of God, trusting in him, which the physical eye can't see, that is eternal. And so the things not seen are the promises of God. The walk of faith looks beyond the trouble of the, to the glory of God and tribulation works for our glory. Romans chapter eight and verse 28, all things, it didn't say all things are good, all things can work together for my good. That means good things, bad things that happen in my life, God can take all of them, stir them all together and come out and something glorious can come out of it. And the things that I thought were going to destroy me or I even feared would destroy me as I walked in faith with God end up being a stepping stone to greater blessings than I've ever had before. Tribulation is necessary for sanctification. Again, it's not the tribulation that makes you strong. Tribulation is the, is the uh, opportunity to use your faith against it. Tribulation is nothing more than now I have something to use this weapon called the sword of the spirit against. And so again, tribulation is necessary for sanctification. Tribulation doesn't come from God. Again, it comes from Satan. Satan's desire is to destroy us through tribulation. God's desire is to preserve us and improve us through tribulation. God's weapons are proven in the midst of tribulation, combat with Satan and circumstances around us. You know what? Our armies, when they go out to fight, how come we can send them out to fight? We didn't create the enemy. We're not the ones that caused the communists to come in. We're not the ones that caused enemies to come in. We're not the ones that caused all that. Our government didn't do all that. There's satanic things out there sending them, but we don't send out someone into war until they're ready. That's why they go through basic training, learn their weapons. Weapons. And on top of that, we know something. Our weapons are superior to their weapons. And so what does God do? God waits till the right time to allow us to go into those things. Again, the, temp the trials and troubles are out there, but God preserves us for a while and then sends us out there. Why does he send us out there? He knows we're capable of handling it. He didn't cause the problem. He knows we're greater than Satan and he will not allow anything to come upon us, which is greater than us, which means God trusts us in the meantime. I can handle Satan. I can handle this problem because I have superior weapons and I have superior understanding and God promised I would come out successful on the other side. So again, tribulation is necessary for spiritual growth. Romans 5, 3, we glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation works patience. James chapter 1, verses 2 and 3, count it all joy when you fall into different types of trials, knowing that the trying of your faith works patience. Ephesians chapter six, verses 10 and 11. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles or the trials and temptations of the devil so I can stand against him. What's all these weapons for? To I can come out successful on the other side. Our weapons are not to hang on the wall and say, aren't those beautiful weapons? They're to be used in war because why? In this world, we're gonna face war with Satan. First Peter 5, 10, I love this verse. But the God of all grace, who has called us into his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered for a while, make you perfect. The word means mature, stabilize you, strengthen you, and settle you. This means making you steadfast in every trial and trouble of life. What am I telling you? You going through problems today? Shout and rejoice. You're gonna come out successful on the other side. Use what God has given you and you cannot be destroyed. See you next time. If you would like to become a partner with Bob Yandian, visit our website at bobyandian.com and click on Partnership or call us at 918-250-2207. You can order resources, become a partner, or browse free articles and podcasts by visiting our website at bobyandian.com. You can also join our mailing list and receive weekly devotions and the latest ministry updates. Thank you for watching today's broadcast. We'll see you next time on Student of the Word with Bob Yandian.